Hello everyone, and welcome to the third installment of Hacking Evergreen. And I'm your host, Blake Graham Henderson. So now we're gonna go over and get Git for Windows. We need to install two packages actually, both the Git Bash and the GitHub software. So here we're gonna click on Git for Windows, download, and we'll start through the installation of this. Just go through the defaults. Okay, install that software, and we'll need to install another one which is at desktop.github.com, download for Windows 64. It's just a couple of clicks, you can skip that. We're going to need to put the git repo in there. So evergreenils.org. and evergreen downloads we can go down here to the git repository and click on git location and that takes us here and we need to click on evergreen.git and now we have the url to the git repo for evergreen copy and paste that into our github for windows desktop it'll clone it right into the my documents folder this re repo is pretty big it takes a little while now that we have it, you can look at the history of the master branch. You can change the branch. Uh, we're editing our code all the way down here, 2.12.4. That's what our Docker container is running, so we might as well switch over to that branch so that we're looking at the same stuff. And here it is in the documents. This is the contents of the source code that was just now cloned. We'll open up Eclipse. We downloaded that earlier. Eclipse is going to ask us where we want the workspace to be. You can just leave it default. Right on. Close this welcome screen. And we need to add our project to Eclipse. File, New. We'll just choose Project. Because Evergreen's written in various different languages, Perl and JavaScript and tons and tons of different ones will just go general so the location needs to be in my documents github and the project name match it the same as the folder name evergreen with the capital E and now we should see the source code for evergreen loaded into Eclipse next thing we need to do is find a bug and I'll just kind of give you a little tour of launchpad.net. This is where we currently keep track of our evergreen bugs. You click bugs, you can sort by importance, you can sort by status, there are different ways. Heat is kind of important, so heat is how many people are affected by the bug. Advanced search, you can turn on and off different things. Like right now, we don't really care about the ones that already have a fix. I have a bug that we can maybe look at for today. It's called group members, something like that. Here it is. Group members don't display. <clears throat> this is one where on the web-based staff client, you open up a Patreon account and then you click on group members. It doesn't show any group members. So let's take a look at that. If we go ahead and log into the web-based staff client on our Docker machine, it gives us a certificate problem. You can just go ahead and click through the certificate. And to double check, you also want to make sure that um, it opens up in port 7682. And that's what you should be able to see, not found, instead of a certificate error. Now we can log in to the web-based staff client. It's admin and the password's demo 123. And here we need to, for the first time, we need to go ahead and register our workstation, pick a branch, give it a test name and log back in search for patrons and now we're going to confirm the bug uh, just search for letter a okay pick one of these search, search results click on it go to other go to group member details and lo and behold, the bug is correct. We've just confirmed that it doesn't show anything in the group member details. But if you refresh and not change the URL, it will show it. So the code exists.
So now let's do it again, but this time let's open up the browser tools and look at the console. Go back to search, search for A, click a result, click on other, and go to group member details. Okay, now we have a little bit more information down here in the console. Aha! Grid.setQuery is not a function. Okay. Gives us some uh, direction, tells us which file, app.js, and what line on the file. Okay, well that's good. So from here we might be able to find what we're looking for, or at least a starting place. So we go back over here and we find the file app.js <clears throat> and there we are on line 1511. There's the call to grid.setquery and for whatever reason it's telling us that that's not a function. Okay, so we've found a file that we're going to potentially edit. In order to edit it we need to um, set up a, a connection to our Linux machine with our edits using that shared folder. We can do a locate app.js. Now app.js has a lot of files so we're going to need to grep that output for patron because we know it's in a patron folder and then we can also further grep that with UI. Now we have two places where that file exists. One in the production folder open ILS and then one in the repo. So let's open up handy dandy notepad plus plus. The first time you open up notepad plus plus we're going to need to make some changes to the settings. So click on settings and go to preferences. We're going to make two changes. One is in new document and we want the new document to be set to Unix. And the other thing we're going to change is in language. And we want to replace all of the tab characters with space characters. This is because Evergreen source code is written with space characters instead of tab characters. Press close and we're ready to go. And let's start setting up a script that can copy our file back and forth. So CP for copy and we're going to copy the git repo to a folder. We need to make a folder real quick. So we'll go to our share, we'll make a new folder and we'll give it the bug name, bug ID number. There we go. And we can just delete these other test folders. And we're going to copy that git code over to mnt share slash the folder name, the bug name, app underscore git.js. And then we're going to do it again. This time we'll copy the one out of production, open on ls, copy that over to the same folder and we'll call it app.js and we'll do that again and this time we'll call it app original org or og now we've got three files and while we're at it here let's install a new tool I'll introduce you to Beyond Compare. This is a really nice tool to have. So we'll run through the wizard here. Install, install, accept, next, go, go, go. So now with that installed, you can click two files and right click and cl choose Compare. And now it says it's the binary same. So this is app underscore og and app underscore git. Now we can compare the original app.js and app git and look they're the same as well. So all three of these files are identical every single line. Edit app.js We 
we can save our file. We'll put it in our shared folder on the desktop. Just call it update. It saves it with .txt on the end of it, but that's okay. And we can comment out these copy lines. So we just used them already to set up our original files. And then we need to set up a copy command to copy them back after potentially we make changes. This is going to be the section of our script that copies the stuff off of our shared folder and puts it back into the production folder. This is for debugging and testing. Now we should see that script over here on our Docker container. There we go. Now it'll execute. So on to editing the code. Here I can show you real quickly how we can make a change to this file and affect change on our Docker container. Let's do something simple. Let's do an alert. This is JavaScript. We'll do alert and we'll say grid and we'll add the grid variable and we'll just alert that. Save the file execute our copy script, go back to the staff client, refresh, and there's our alert. So the change we made happened. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go through a troubleshooting routine, trying to figure out how to solve this bug. I'm gonna add things to the script, subtract things from the script, test, and repeat. Now when you have, you have your changes made, you can do a compare to see what you've changed to the original. And here is something that I ended up uh, finding to be the solution. And you can compare it to the git file. Now the git file is the one that we're going to use for git for committing our changes. So we're not going to include any console logs or anything. We're just going to make the the minimum amount of changes in order to fix the bug. Copy over using beyond compare just the lines that I need into our app underscore git.js file. So I'm skipping the console.log lines and I'm just adding the lines we need. And then I'll save that app underscore git.js. It's just those lines, just a few lines, save. And now you can open up the app or app underscore git.js file in notepad and go to the lines affected and double check to make sure that it looks nice. There aren't any um, indented lines that are incorrect or anything like that. Let's make sure it looks good because when you look at it and be on compare sometimes it spaces things out when it's not really spaced out in the file. So just to give it a double double check. Looks good. Now we're going to copy our changes to the git repo but we need to reverse the direction so we're going to copy the app underscore git.js file back over to the uh, open surf repos evergreen and we're going to go ahead and get into open surf and we're going to do a git branch now you can see that we're on the standard master branch rel 2.12.4 <clears throat> and we're gonna create a new branch there we go and we're gonna give it LP and then the bug ID now you can see a git branch shows us LP and then the launchpad ID so now we're gonna copy over the file into our repo and now you can do a git diff and here you can see the changes that we're going to commit just a few lines three lines above one line removed and another one added down below so we'll go ahead and do a git commit minus as and the first line of your git commit needs to be the launchpad bug id and we'll grab that and it's nice to go ahead and also add the title of that bug which is in this case web staff client group members don't display. We'll stick that on there. Do a couple enter keys and give it a quick summary of what we did. 
see altered the app.js file so that the call to grid dot set query happens after the init tab execution using the dot then now we can go ahead and give it some test instructions step one log into webby search for patrons find a patron step two click a search result and click the other menu. Step three, choose group member details. Four, notice that, the, that there are no grid items. Step five, apply the patch and then repeat steps one through three and six. Notice that there is at least one grid item. Save that file and now you can type in git log and you can see our commit at the top and that is how you do that. It has been fun hanging out with you today. I really appreciate you watching. Evergreen is wonderful software and let's continue to improve upon it. Have a great day. Bye now.